My name is Peter Mills. If you look at the nature of cultural impact assessment, when things are being scoped, written into the regulations are the expectations that the assessment of effects uh, uh, be broadly scoped to try to consider the impacts of these undertakings on uh, cultural practitioners uh, in the practice of their traditional and customary practices. That means to me, and everything that I have read, that if there's, there's a cultural practitioner in Waimea who uh, wakes up in the morning and looks up at Mauna Kea from their home with their family and sees a 30-meter telescope on that mountain, that is something that should be considered as an adverse effect to that cultural practitioner, even if they aren't on the mountain or at it within the historic district. And that kind of assessment is not in the CDUA. I have been on the mountain with Patrick McCoy on several occasions. Do you concur with largely with, with his analysis? Yes, I do concur with most of the things which he concludes. Uh, there are th places where we do disagree on, on some portions. Uh, he reaches the conclusion that almost all the burials are on the summits of cinder cones. If you go back to the uh, a report of the U.S. Coastal Geodetic Survey with the pendulum study in 1892 and look at their description of the burials near Pu'ulili Noe, uh, it, it actually says the burials in the red cinder near Pu'ulili Noe, which in, to me implies something other than the summit of Pu'ulili Noe. Just because archaeologists have not relocated those burials doesn't mean that they're not there. And uh, all of the survey that is done by modern archaeologists has been largely pedestrian survey. And given the active nature of, of colluvial action uh, uh, or the movement of, of sediments down slope, it would be very easy for burials, burials which were exposed in 1892 to no longer be visible on the surface. But in general, I hold him in great standing as uh, an archaeologist who's devoted a great portion of his life to studying that summit region, and I look at him very much as a mentor. You said that there were pieces of um, academic research that were not included in the um, EIS. Could you elaborate on that? I was talking about the final archaeological inventory oh. survey, uh, okay. which was, the, I think it's an 86-page uh, report prepared by Cultural Surveys Hawaii. Scott Williams's report, uh, his master's thesis, which was in 19, published in 1989 and well-known in the archaeological community, wasn't in that inventory of archaeological projects. Uh, nor was, I just noticed, was the 2006 report that I prepared uh, on our geological and archaeological evaluation of the Mauna Kea Ads Quarry. The final archaeological inventory survey report doesn't mention the genealogical chant for Kaui Keoli for the uh, birth of Kamehameha III, which would have been written in the early 1800s, uh, uh, which includes in it the Ohanao Kamauna Akea, Opu'ae Kamauna Akea, O wakea ke kane, o papa o valinu kavahini, which is uh, to translate uh, that that account is talking about the birth of Mauna, Mauna Kea and tying it to wakea and to papa and to valinu and to these um, to these highly significant people. And it, if you compare, it is not doing the same for Hualalai. It's not doing the same for Mauna Loa. And in essence, to me. Uh, in my interpretation of that, that's setting aside the, the particularly significant place of Mauna, Mauna Kea. Uh, it is readily available, but it is not making it into the CDUA because it seems to support something that some people, I think, would like to ignore. Every time information is omitted, we have less context for what we're trying to interpret. Would you have an opinion as to whether the anthropological and archaeological surveys that have been reported in the CDUA and the final EIS, are they adequate? I think that the uh, work done for the overall science reserve by Pacific uh, Consulting Services is about as, as excellent of a good faith effort as could be made to identify the physical material things that are present. I do not feel that the state of Hawaii as a whole has met the intent of Chapter 343 with cultural impact assessment to consider intangible value in places that are in a way that is adequate. 
It says, shrines are by far the most common site type in the UH management areas. Would you concur that shrines are by far the most common site in the UH management areas? Yes, I would. Okay, thanks. This number includes possible shrines where some doubt exists about the presence of uprights because none were found in a standing position. It is possible that the construction of some shrines was never completed or the uprights were removed at a later date. Do you concur with that conclusion? Yes. Stone markers slash memorials. One of the most ambiguous classes of sites are piles of or stacks of rocks believed to be a marker of some kind or a memorial to some person or event. In all but a couple of cases, the actual function is unclear. Do you agree with that particular statement? Yes. Why would it be identification of these sites or these markers or these memorials be ambiguous? We know that people built piles of stones for many different reasons. In, even in Hawaii over time, there were uh, uh, trails that Paniolo and civilian conservation corps workers would make or use in order to get around the mountain. And in some cases, uh, in some cases, uh, those piles uh, are a better way to mark a trail route than expecting a footpath to develop, especially on an active surface where there, is lo where there are loose rocks and ash and 100 mile an hour winds that can move uh, they can blow away uh, footpaths, uh, the ahu have a better chance of standing. And if you learn where the markers are, trails, uh, trails can be identified by ahu. We know that uh, people were buried underneath uh, 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 stone piles in many cases in Hawaiian culture. We know that ali'i traveled to the summit and built memorials uh, uh, using stone piles in the 19th century. We know uh, uh, that, that shrines many times would need stone piles uh, in order to support uprights. There are many different reasons why stone piles can be built. And uh, nothing about an archaeologist gives great insight when, uh, uh, to a pile of stones when there is no historical context to go with them. If it was, if it was clear that it was a, a site that was either pre-contact or 50 years or older, then it would be identified as an historic property. Is that correct? Yes. And because it's ambiguous that it's, it's not, you can't for, with any certainty identify it as an historic property, then in, in these reports, these particular features, cultural features, or whatever they might be, has either been identified, has been identified either as a fine spot or a cultural resource, is that correct? Correct. Okay. okay. Cultural resources in the science reserve include a large number of remains that, are, that at present cannot be classified as historic properties or sites as normally defined in state and federal laws, but which nevertheless need to be considered in developing appropriate management strategies, which according to Tom King, 1998-235 need to consider all cultural resources. Do you agree with that statement? Yes. Okay. Is, is this correctly identified as Appendix E, find spots recorded in the Mauna Kea Science Reserve? Yes. What do you see as makes up the most type of find spots in this particular Appendix E? Marker. So this particular figure is in CD8. Can you explain what seems to be the problem with this particular figure based upon your analysis? Uh, there are two different things that are not on this figure that were in the Pacific uh, Consulting Services Incorporated map of, uh, of the astronomy district. Uh, uh, well, two, two different classes of things. Uh, one is there are two, uh, two locations listed as sites which is State uh, uh, Inventory of Historic Places Site 16169 and Site 21447 uh, that were both listed 
in this area that are, are that are omitted from this map. The other thing is all the fine spots that you have just been discussing are not included on the map, which makes it appear emptier of of items of cultural uh, sites and fine spots than what is listed in the PCSI report. This is a figure 5.1, location of historic properties and fine spots in astronomy precinct and surrounding areas. And this is taken from the AIS for the astronomy precinct done by Pacific Consulting Services. Of the two figures, which, which figure based upon your experience and qualifications as an archeologist should have been included in the CDA to give an appropriate and assessment of this cultural resources. If I may respond, the overall yes. thing is when you look at the CDUA map and you compare it to this immediately, you notice um, that, there is le that, that there are fewer sites uh, on the CDUA map than what was on this map to begin with. Part of that was the way it's cropped and part of it is also uh, because there were sites that were literally omitted from the same area. So is it fair to say that if anyone who is in the position of making decisions regarding, in this case, this particular CDA, that they should have the best and most appropriate information presented to them in regards to cultural resources? Yes. Thank you. Would this particular and proposed TMT project create an interference between the major pool and some of the shrine complexes that are in, to the north of it? They could. Okay. Uh, we don't know the purposes of all of the shrines that are up there. Some may, in fact, be astronomical. And depending on where one is standing, if they are observing shrines, a large structure in that, in that area may have an influence on what is attempting to be observed unless you have a full understanding of why the shrines were built and where you would be standing when you were observing them, it would be difficult to answer that there's absolutely no potential effect on terms, in terms of the kinds of observations a cultural practitioner may wish to make uh, from this built uh, cultural landscape on top of the mountain or even the natural cultural landscape which might fit within those observations. Uh, when you consider the potential influence of archaeoastronomy, uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the study of, of ancient stars um, from shrines and locations, uh, one must also understand what is attempting to be observed. The only way that an archaeological inventory survey report or a CDUA could reach the opinion that it has no effect on that process would be have a full understanding of the cultural values of those shrines through extensive uh, a discussion with cultural practitioners who may have cultural knowledge of how those shrines should be used. Do you know if the Mauna Kea Science Reserve is eligible for inclusion as a traditional cultural property? Portions of it have been, as, have been assigned uh, as traditional cultural properties and eligibility determinations have been made under the National Register as well as the State Register. Uh, that said, uh, the boundaries that have been established have not been negotiated in any way which reflects the intent of Bulletin 38. Are significant sections of the CDA incomplete? I feel that's true, yes. Would you know? if the BLNR or the entities tasked with reviewing and approving the CDUA are, are aware, and if they're not aware, they might be aware now, of the omitted fine spots? I am not aware. We need to recognize that what is being proposed, even with mitigation, which means to lessen, even with mitigation measures in place, is having an adverse effect on those historic properties and uh, the the issue that I struggle with is trying to recognize that it's not simply the historic property that is being affected, it's the cultural practitioners who are, who are connected to those properties that are being affected. And it's that second part that I feel is missing most of the attention. I think that PCSI did a fantastic job of compiling information on the physical things in that area. And just because the shrines may not move, 
it's still having an effect on the cultural practitioners who are going to be in that area to have that here. That is the reason why we're trying to come up with mitigation measures uh, that are appropriate. Would you agree that there has been a lot of spiritual activity going on up there to have that many fine spots in Oahuakua? I do infer that there was a great deal of activity by native Hawaiians in the summit region of Mauna Kea before the arrival of Western contact. I know of no other area with that density of shrines uh, or, or, or uprights. That is, that is something that I do not know of a similar situation for. Do you recall that this is an image that you reviewed when you looked at the EIS? Yes, this is what I, I recall, I think. So that's figure 3-6. Do you recognize that as a map that you saw in the final EIS? I do. And you note at the top of that page in the map, there is the location for Waimea? Yes. Do you recognize those arrows as showing the various uh, view plane possibilities from that Waimea area? Yes. All right, now isn't it true that your comment letter does not address any of your concerns about the area of impact or area of emphasis? Correct. There is no direct reference to those. And there's no reference at all to what you have called uh, in your testimony in intangible interests? Those words are not used. They are a part of the traditional cultural properties issues that I do raise in the letter. Were your uh, comments addressed in the EIS? No. All right. Are there responses on the right-hand side to the comments that you submitted? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you understand those to be the comments from the agency reviewing your letter? Yes. Okay. And you understand that this letter itself is actually included as part of the record that goes with the EIS to the governor for approval, correct? Yes. Do you have an understanding that the uh, AIS for the region that is covered addresses the summit region for this project? Yes. Do you understand that the summit region is a much broader area than simply the five acres, correct? Yes. How would you describe the location for the Vauakua? For the Mauna Kea region, uh, specifically, because the term could apply to other places, for the Mauna Kea region and coming not from my own knowledge, but from the concepts uh, that I have learned from uh, cultural practitioners, it would be the area beginning above the forest. All right, do you see the section where uh, David Malo describes the Va'oakua as a region that would have been uh, below the Va'o Maukele section in paragraph number 12? Yes. And from reading this description, would you agree that that would be an area that would not be at the top or summit region of a mountain? In this case, yes. And if you take a look at the far left portion of the page, Dr. Mills, you see that arrow there for a historic property? You, you notice there it says 16169? Yes, I do, I do see that there. Okay, yeah. so 16169 is included in okay. figure 4-1. Uh, okay. 4.1, is that correct? Okay, that's my mistake. Yes, if this is the correct map and that's the correct insertion, then 16169 is, in fact, on this map. Okay, and so it wasn't omitted from the CDUA, is that correct? Uh, uh, assuming that this is the correct version, then that, that is correct. Okay, and if you take a look at the uh, access road up to the TMT site, you see there's a historic site mentioned there as well. What's the number of that site? Yeah, that one says 21447, correct. Okay, so that's again one of the sites that you said was omitted. And are you aware uh, that both these sites are also discussed within the CDUA as well as the final env environmental impact statement? Yes, I know that they're listed in the table. Dr. Mills, as you sit here today, you're not aware what site 21447 is. I recall that 21447 was a, a two-stone alignment in my, in my mind, but, uh, but uh, and not, not a platform, but maybe I'm wrong. So you're not sure if the two reports that you said were omitted from the AIS are, in fact, referenced in the final environmental impact statement? 
I'm not certain. Okay. Let me ask you this. Is it common to scatter reports and documents so that even an archaeologist can't locate them in a single place? Oh. I, th I think it's common for that to occur in a process such as this, yes. But what does it do for the professional um, process? When sites aren't listed on one map and they are on another, it creates confusion. Yeah, and then could it also result in the damage um, of important archaeological or cultural or historic sites? Yes.